All right, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll discuss the shortcuts that I'm going to be using today. I'm only going to be using two. One is Control R to render the frame, and the second is to use the mouse wheel to adjust a number up and down. So you can see here on the width here on the upper right corner, I can adjust the width up and down using the mouse wheel. And I can hit Control R to render the frame. Those are the only shortcuts I'm going to be using today because there's not a lot you do with the keyboard here. Um, so these are the templates that I'm going to use to demonstrate some of the different effects that you can do with the, the noise settings. I have some samples. I have a sample of a template device or template uh, object, like the oval basically. I have a smooth irregular shape. I have a jagged irregular shape. And I have this shape which I made using the blob brush, which is right here. Um, I thought about doing a tutorial on the blob brush, but honestly the blob brush is kind of self-explanatory. So to access the noise settings, we double click on the layer and we go to this last tab, which is vectors. And here are the noise settings. Um, the two basic settings are noisy outlines and noisy fills. So let's do a sample of each of those and see how it comes out. We'll start with the noisy outlines and hit OK. And I'll render this frame. And as you can see, it basically creates kind of these jagged edges along the outside of um, these objects. Makes them really sketchy looking. Um, not especially pretty, but there are reasons to do this. Like if you intentionally want to make your work look like something that was done for um, the, the old series uh, Home Movies or Dr. Katz, this is a setting that would definitely let you do that. All right, let's look at some other things. But for the most part, I find that noisy outlines tends to bring the uh, the outline inside of the shape. So let's do the opposite, though. Let's switch to noisy fills and render that. And what you find what this does here is it tends to bring the shape inside of the outline. It kind of makes it look like it's incompletely colored. And that is kind of interesting. But uh, the the outer edges, so it kind of you know it's kind of like a coloring book where the coloring book has you know like nice clean lines, but the kid who filled it in didn't quite do it right. That's the kind of effect you can get with that setting. Now let's try both, and there's a reason I want to show you both uh, because this is something that's really useful for doing irregular objects without having to add a lot of points. Like if you want really jagged rocks or if you want to add some fringe to your trees, stuff like that. Uh, it's the Enabling both is really good for that. It creates uh, uh, an identical fill and outline. Now let's go back into vectors here. And let's talk about animated noise. Uh, this one's pretty simple. It animates the noise. Now you don't want your interval to be too fast. I'm on 15 frames, so one. If you're if you're doing 30 frames, I recommend an interval of 2. If you're doing 60 frames, I recommend an interval of 4. Especially if you want the sketchiness to be visible. So I'll put this in motion here. You won't actually be able to see it in the preview pane. I'll do a render of this and I'll show it right now, I guess. And as you can see from that render, it kind of does that um, fishbowl-like effect, where it's, it's like you're looking through uh, irregular glass and stuff like that. That's what your animated vectors does. Now, for some of the settings, we'll turn off noise so I can show you what these do. Offset. Offset higher is more. So we're going to set that to 12, and I'll, sh and I'll do another render here. Offset causes the lines to go further in and further out and it, it gives them very jagged edges. So at this point, like these actually start to look like rocks, and that's pretty good. Our poor donut here looks like it's been overly glazed. Now let's return that to six, and we'll show you scale. Now scale kind of goes backwards. This is how frequently the line moves in and out. So let's do that down by half to 24. I'll hit render. So you notice the jagginess goes in and out only a little bit like it did originally, but 
it goes in and out much more frequently. So less produces more when it comes to that setting. So let's bring that back up to 48. Now the line count is very simple. Um, changing the line count increases the number of lines. So it's, it's like you've gone around the image multiple times. So sort of like if you're in the movie The Ring and you're drawing multiple rings over and over again, that's what it produces. Pretty simple, actually. The last setting I'll cover here is this one, extra sketchy. What this does um, is it makes the, the outline itself slightly irregular. So uh, it'll vary from thick to thin as it goes along the shape to kind of make it look like it was hand drawn. I, I don't think this setting works incredibly great. Uh, it works best with really thin lines, thin to invisible lines, like on the donut here and the rock here. I don't think it works as well for large lines because you have these conspicuous jumps in thickness, especially at the start and finish of the shape right here. But otherwise, that is a pretty good setting to fiddle around with. So we'll turn that off. So that's noise. You can give it, use it to give, like the, the thinking like when shows like Dr. Katz and Home Movies came out was that this animated sketchiness kind of served as a substitute for animating a character who was sitting still. So it would give them the, the illusion of, of lifefulness, of just the simple shifts of a person sitting or standing. And, and that way they only had to animate the eyes and the mouth and not much else. But that's what those settings are for. You can, there's, I know there's a couple of YouTube animators who, who definitely use the animated noise feature. But it's not just for animation, of course. Like you, it, it's great for making things that are fringy and sketchy and stuff like that. Good for backgrounds. Like if you want your backgrounds to look like a kid from a coloring book and things like that. So noise settings, you find that in the vector tab of the layer settings, which you reach by double clicking on your layer. Um, that's all I had for today. Um, my last video, the orc one, took a long time because there were a lot of original assets, so I kind of got burned out a bit. So just a tutorial this week. I will have something new for you next week, though. Um, probably get back to D&D for a little while. Um, hoping to start playing again once things finish up. But anyway, thanks for watching. Happy animating, and I'll see you next time.